experiment, I am going to demonstrate how to determine osmotic potential of cell sap using Royo discolor or Tradescantia leaves using 50% plasmolysis method. So in this experiment, we require Tradescantia leaves. Now, as you can see, its upper surface can be easily distinguished from the uh, below surface. The upper surface is greener in color. However, the lower surface is, is purple in color. Also, we require sodium chloride to uh, prepare the hypotonic solution and also the distilled water. Now, you all must be familiar with the term osmosis. Osmosis is the net movement of water across the semi-permeable membrane from a region of higher water potential to a region of lower water potential. So this water potential is composed of different constituents among which the solute potential or the osmotic potential is the most important one uh, in, in our experiment. Now it is the, um, the solute potential is the impact of uh, the dissolved solutes on the water potential. So more the concentration of solutes in a solution, lower will be its uh, water potential. So basically we can say that the solute concentration, it decreases the water potential. Now, if we keep cells in a hypertonic solution, so what will happen? The water will move from inside the cell to the surrounding solution because obviously in the surrounding solution, the concentration of solutes is more. So the water will move from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. So we can say that exosmosis takes place and the cells are plasmolyzed. Now the stage at which 50% of the cells are plasmolyzed, it is known as the incipient plasmolysis. Basically, at this point, the osmotic potential of the in, uh, osmotic potential inside the cell is equal to the osmotic potential outside the cell. Now, in this experiment, we have to determine the osmotic potential of the cell. So, it is determined using the Van Hoff equation, which I will um, uh, shortly discuss. So, now let's start with the chemical preparation. First, we have to prepare a stock solution of sodium chloride, uh, from which we will then prepare different uh, dilute it to different concentrations of NaCl. Now for the preparation of one molar NaCl solution, we can calculate it from the molarity formula that is the weight required for NaCl will be equal to molarity into the molecular weight of NaCl into the volume in liters. And uh, when calculated, it is around 2.93 grams of sodium chloride. If we dissolve it in 50 ml of distilled water, it will give us one molar um, NaCl solution. Now, uh, we will dilute this stock solution of NaCl to 5 ml and prepare different uh, concentrations, increasing concentrations of NaCl ranging from 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.4 and 0 0.45 molar solution. Now, the concentration of NaCl is increasing uh, in these test tubes. That is, this, uh, this test tube is hypertonic as compared to this one test tube. Okay, now we will take fresh leaves of Tradescantia as I already, as I already um, mentioned that its upper and below surface is easily distinguishable. Now so that uh, we will take it in such a manner that is that the epidermal peel can be easily and we will peel off it in such a way that we get a thin very thin section of the lower surface. This is a thin section. Now we will take this thin section and put it on a slide and then pour different concentrations. In first slide we will pour concentrations from this test tube, then in second from this test tube and similarly likewise in other slides. Now we take this section of the lower surface of the Tradescantia and uh, carefully put it on a slide and pour one drop of uh, from a solution uh, present in the test tube one. Then gently put a cover slip and examine it under the microscope. Now, uh, in a lifeless manner, we prepare seven different slides with different uh, with sections from the lower surface of Tradescantia. And in each slide, uh, that is in slide number second, we pour the solution from the test tube second. In slide number third, we pour the solution from the uh, test tube third. And similarly, in the seventh slide, we pour the solution from the test tube seven. And after we give a time gap of uh, 15 minutes for each of the slides so that the plasmolysis occurs. And we will then examine each of these slides under the microscope.
Now, as you can see in this image, the cells are present in the normal state. This is the uh, this is the image of uh, the slide number one with zero molar NaCl solution. Here, the uh, cell sap that is which is the purple in color, it is tightly pressed against the cell wall. That is, no plasmolysis has occurred. So this is the normal cell, turgid cell. No plasmolysis has occurred in this. Now, in this, we will note down the total number of cells in focus. And also in second table, we will note down the number of cells plasmolyzed. That will be uh, that will be shown in the table. Now this image shows the slide under slide number third in which we had poured 0.25 molar NaCl solution. You can see that some of the cells have started uh, to plasmolyze. This is the slide number five with molar concentration 0.35 molar concentration of NaCl. You can see as compared to the previous slides, uh, previous cells, uh, the cells have started uh, to plasmolyze more. And this is because the outside medium that is the sodium chloride, it is more hypotonic as, com hypertonic as compared to the previous ones. In this also, we will note down the total number of cells in focus and also the number of cells plasmolyzed. This is the slide number seven with molar concentration of NaCl that is 0.45 molar. Now the outside solution is hypertonic as compared to the inside of the cell. You can easily see that as compared to the previous concentrations of NaCl, this concentration is very high, that is 0.45 molar. So you can easily see that the most number of cells have plasmolyzed. So this is the table showing the effect of different molar concentrations of NaCl on the degree of plasmolysis in uh, tradescantia leaf cells. Now, this is the test tube 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 concentration of NaCl that is increasing from 0 to 0 0.45 molar amount of stock solution that is increasing from, uh, uh, we will calculate this from the M1V1 amount of diluted uh, distilled water, uh, total volume, and the total number of cells. We will note down and the number of cells plasmolyzed. So then by this, we can calculate the percent plasmolysis. Now, based on the calculations, we will plot a graph um, uh, where on x-axis we will show concentration of NaCl solution and on y-axis percent plasmolysis. Now, you can see with increasing NaCl solution, the percentage of plasmolysis has increased. Now, uh, we can see that the constant, with increasing the concentration of NaCl, the percentage of plasmolysis has increased. Now, from this graph, we will um, note down the concentration of NaCl at which the 50% of the cells have been plasmolyzed. We can easily note down from the graph by plotting this against this and we will get around zero at around 0 0.33 NaCl concentration, we will get 50% of cells plasmolyzed. Now, from the graph, now from the graph, we got uh, the uh, molarity of NaCl solution at 50% plasmolysis stage. Now we, the uh, basic uh, motto of the uh, experiment was to determine the osmotic potential of cell uh, by 50% plasmolysis. So this can be determined using the Van't Hoff equation that is psi A is equal to minus uh, MIRT where M is the molarity of NaCl solution at 50% plasmolysis stage. This we got from the graph. I is the ionization constant. Now here its value will be 2 because uh, in NaCl there are 2 ions sodium and chloride. R is the gas constant whose value is equal to 0.00831. T is the absolute temperature. Now, by putting the value of M that we got from the graph, that is 0.33, uh, we put in this formula and we get the osmotic potential of the cell sap, that is minus 1.607 megapascal.